You know what's better than a static gallery of your astrophotography images? A 360 interactive tour of the night sky with your astrophotography images. Hey and welcome to Making Space. I recently collaborated with Astrobloke and shortly after we wrapped I was looking at my ideas list and so it was time I made a video showing how to use After Effects 360 or VR or immersive video tools. Then like a cosmic light bulb over my head, I had an idea. Wouldn't it be cool to place those images of Glens in their correct position in the night sky in a 360 gallery? After a quick check with Glenn about whether or not anyone would like this idea, he replied with enthusiasm, although possibly the enthusiasm when one realises they've been cornered at a party by that guest. Sorry Glenn. I'm going to show you how to take your own astrophotography pictures and add them into a spherical image, and upload that to YouTube. At that point, you could embed your video on your own website or blog. I've also stumbled across an alternative hosting option, which I'll talk about too. Let's jump into After Effects. And we're not going to start off with a comp, at least not in the usual way. Instead, I'm going to go to Composition, VR, Create VR Environment. And in the pop-up, I'm going to choose Create VR Master. And I'll leave most of the settings as they are, but I'm going to set my comp to be 10 minutes long. The final result won't have any animation, but I reckon that if it's playing on YouTube, end users won't want to have to deal with the video stopping. For the camera, we'll be using a 2D camera, and we will want a 3D null, and we will want that camera centered. But we're not going to use any 3D plugins or edge blending. With all that set, click Create VR Master. Now A produces this square comp, and that's it. But let's reopen the VR composition pop-up, and this time choose Generate VR Output. Let me just explain what's going on. The VR control script has generated a new VR output comp, and if I expand the new folder on the project window, I can see it has created six new comps. Each one has a camera pointing in a different direction, and the output comp stitches them together. First as a cube map, and then in the final comp, turns that cube into a spherical image. Each of the direction comps are a copy of the original VR Master, but they are copies from the time of creation. So every time you make a change in VR Master, you need to go back into the VR panel and refresh to update these comps. But as long as you know that, you can then start to have some real fun. Resetting everything and getting back to the VR Master comp, you see I now have a camera and a null object. The camera is parented to the null object, which means the camera's position and rotation are linked to the null. I can move the camera itself, but if I were to move the null layer, the camera moves with it, which comes in really handy for all sorts of animation. For this project, we're going to use it in a slightly different way. Select the null layer, and go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control and hit enter to rename it to Right Ascension, and then go back to Effects, Expression Controls, and choose Angle Control, and rename this to Declination. Back on the timeline, select the Null layer again and hit R to expose the rotation properties. Use the X Rotation Pick Whip, and link it to Declination, and for the Y Rotation, link that to Right Ascension, and then expand the Expressions area and type times minus 15. This converts the slider values to hours and minutes, and the minus ensures the null rotates in the correct direction for right ascension. So now we have two controls which make it simple to point the After Effects camera to a location in the night sky. Now go to Layer, New, Solid, and create a solid 1000 pixels by 1000. Hit Enter and rename this to Placeholder. Make this a 3D layer, and then use the parenting controls to make it a child of the null layer. And after tapping P to expose the position properties, set its position to 2000. So this gives us a placeholder orbiting the camera and null. We can now place our nebula pictures into the scene at the placeholder's position, which we'll set using the right ascension and declination controls. But let's be a little bit fancy, shall we? Rather than just drop in the images, Let's create a design for them, which will keep everything manageable, and allow us to move them around a little. Create a new comp, 
by going to Composition, New Composition. Call it My Spacey Picks, just to offend the purists. Make it square 1000 pixels by 1000, the same as the placeholder's dimensions. Make sure the frame rate and duration both match. AE's default is NTSC's 29.97 FPS. In the new comp, switch to the ellipse tool and then double click it to make a circle shape layer and expand ellipse 1 and drop the size to 20. Probably increase the stroke to 4 and set it to a color of your choice. Set the fill to black. This circle in the center of the comp is going to denote the location of the nebula. Now, import your first astrophoto and add it to the comp. You may want to resize your images into something manageable for After Effects. A massive 12K image will just slow your system down. Even then, resize and position your image off to the side. When you're happy, make sure no layer is selected and switch to the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle to act as a frame for your nebula. If you click in the center of the nebula and hold shift and control, you'll create a square centered on the image. Expand shape layer 2 and rectangle and set the fill to black and the strokes to the same color you used for the circle. And hit enter and rename this to frame. And rename the other shape layer to pin or dot or something that makes sense to you. Make sure you can see the track mat controls, and then on the image layer, select frame as its alpha mat. This turns off frame and crops the nebula. Turn frame's visibility back on, and set its transfer mode to screen. Next, let's get a line between the frame and the pin to denote that we're looking at a magnification. With the pin layer selected, select the pen tool and click in the middle of your image, and then click in the middle of the pin. This creates a line. Expand pin on the timeline. Drag shape one below the ellipse so that the circle's fill hides the end of the line. And actually, drag the whole pin layer to the bottom of the comp. If at this point you'd like to name the nebula, use the text tool and underneath your image type its name or just nebula. We're going to be reusing this comp so it doesn't matter what you type really. Make this text layer a child of the frame layer. Speaking of which, make the image a child of frame 2. And make frame a child of pin. If I have two nebulas really close together, they're going to obscure each other. So I've built this as a square comp to allow us to rotate the nebula. Which means that the image and text will be rotated too. Select the pin layer and hit R to expose the rotation. And then do the same for frame. Hold Alt and click on the frame stopwatch, and then use the pick whip to link to the pin's rotation, and then type times minus one. As you can now see, as I rotate pin, we get a sort of Ferris wheel effect. Now let's make this reusable. Go to Composition, Open in Essential Graphics. Give your EJ a name, Nebula, or My Spacey Picks. Drag into this panel the pin's rotation. Expand the text layer and drag in the source text, and rename this to Nebula Name, otherwise it might get confusing. Drag the whole image layer in, and call it Image. I'm also going to drag in the image layer's position and scale, so that it can make adjustments if I need to. And that's all the hard work done. Close all this up and switch back to the VR Master Comp. Just before we start placing our images, I not usually want to beg, but if you could give my videos a like and a subscribe, I'd be super grateful. On the cam controller layer, set the right ascension and declination to your first nebula's coordinates. The heart nebula is at 2 hours and 33 minutes, so I'll set the right ascension to 2.5. I know this is not massively accurate, and if accuracy is needed, we could write a more complex expression, but I think for the purposes of our fun interactive gallery, this is close enough. If you disagree, let me know and I'll come up with something more precise. Nothing appears to change, but now select the placeholder solid 
and hold Ctrl and tap D to duplicate it. Set its parent to None, and then holding Alt, drag My Spacey Pick onto the layer. The placeholder is replaced with the nebula. Expand the layer on the timeline and you can see the essential graphics. Rotate it down so it's off the horizontal, and you might want to rename the comp too, to keep track of it more easily. Let's do another one. The Flying Bat Nebula's coordinates are 21 hours and 12 minutes by 60 degrees. So 21.2-ish by 60. Same again, duplicate the placeholder, and then holding on, drag in the My Spacey Pix comp. This time, when you expand the essential graphics properties, drag your Flying Bat image from the project window onto the image property. And as it happens, the scale and position are just right, but I can see how to adjust them. And make sure to unparent the comp and rename it. Okay, one more for luck. The Crescent Nebula is 20 hours and 12 minutes, and 38 degrees declination. And angle this away from the Flying Bat Nebula. Turn off your placeholder layer. Set your RA and deck controls back to zero and return to the VR composition panel again. Then in the VR panel, make sure VR master is selected and that the three camera settings are all checked. Then click the refresh button. NASA supplies this amazing 360 image of the Milky Way using celestial coordinates. So to add context, I'm going to drop this into the VR output comp underneath the VR conversion comp. And by using the center of the SpaceyPix comp as the location, I've been able to keep the images from bumping into each other. The idea with this gallery is that each time you capture a new image, you could drop it into this gallery and re-render. Speaking of which, you can now render this as a video. With VR master output selected, go to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. For YouTube, I always use H.264, but before you press Render, click on the Match Source High Bitrate option, and in the Settings panel, scroll all the way down in the Video tab, and then check Video is VR. This adds metadata YouTube will use to make the video interactive. And the final result is pretty good. There's nothing stopping you adding a commentary track, or maybe some music, but you can only zoom in when the video is full screen, which is fine if your end user knows that. So take a look at this website, panoraven.com. They host 360 images, and you can upload an image for free without logging in if you choose. And they provide embed codes for your own website. I found them while prepping this video, so I don't know much about them, but I did like this. The 360 image will remain free and available provided they are viewed at least once every 90 days. It is pretty cool. If you upgrade to the amateur plan, you can get a bit more control, but you've got to pay for the starter package before you get to add hotspots. If anyone knows of an alternative, let me know in the comments and I'll pin it. If you do use Panoraven or another 360 image hosting, instead of rendering out a video, from the output comp, go to Composition, Save Frame As to save an image. And that's it! I hope you found this easy to follow and are inspired to create a fun, different way to show off your images. If you do, please share links in the comments, I'd love to see them. And now for me, well I'm going to email Glenn this list of 50 Minions memes.